Financial statement of a person or an organization is a common term most of us heard. But these detailed statements can differ based on their receiver. Every financial details usually aren't disclosed to a third party. So there comes the pro forma financial statement where all the internal financial information are disclosed and are interconnected to each of the calculations. You will find the process easier than it sounds. Let's see how. Hello there, this is Farihatul Mim from X. Demi, your one stop for Excel blog posts, discussion forum, templates, and VBA related answers. Here we have three sheets. In the income statement sheet, you can see the income statement table, assumption table, capital expenditure, and depreciation tables. In the balance sheet worksheet, you will find the table for balance sheet, the assumptions and lastly, in the cash flow statement sheet, you will find a table listing the various components of the cash flow statement. If you can notice, you can see there are different kinds of fill colors used here. Income statement has been used as blue themed, balance sheet as yellow themed and finally cash flow statement as gray themed. Each of the fill colors basically represent that these information sources will be available from yellow as in balance sheet and blue as in income statement worksheet. We have previously formatted this table so that we can easily make you understand. On these formatted worksheets, we will learn how to create a pro forma financial statement in Excel. We will use Excel 365 for that. You can use any other available Excel versions as well. Let's get down to the video. As we can see that our income statement comes with three consecutive years calculation. So we will discuss the calculations for 2022 only. Rest of the years will follow just as the same. To calculate gross revenue, we need to multiply orders and price per order according to our assumption table equals I6 multiplied by I7. Now refunds will be the gross revenue into the refund percentage which is 2% according to the assumption table equals now refunds will be the negative value so minus revenue which is C7 let's make it absolute using F4 key two times so that our row reference doesn't change but column does even if we use fill handle to copy the formula to somewhere else multiplied by refund percentage which is I8 enter now discounts will be the same formula as refunds so we can just use fill handle to drag it till c9 and we can see that the value gives us gross revenue multiplied by discounts percentage which is five percent now to calculate our net revenue we need to add all of them so we can just use a formula using some function or we can auto sum using alter key and equal key all together so we will get the auto sum keyboard shortcut enter now let's select all of them and using fill handle drag till 2024 so all of our values are just like that now let's calculate cost of goods sold in cell c12 we will add formula equals our net revenue let's make it absolute using f4 key twice so that the row reference doesn't change with the formula copy multiplied by the product percentage for cost of goods sold 40 percent which is i10 now, if we use fill handle to drag so that we get product distribution and merchant services as well, we can see the values like that. So, total cost of goods sold can be added using AutoSum, alter equal. So, gross margin will be net revenue minus cost of goods sold equals C10 minus C15. So, this is our gross margin. Now, to get the values for 2023 and 24. Let's use fill handle to drag till column E. Now, before we go into operating expense, we need to calculate capital expenditure and depreciation. Now, these are our assumed values for data servers, customized app, logistics. In our case, we have chosen these assumptions for all these sheets, but this will vary according to your use. So feel free to change the assumptions according to your convenience. So here, our total capital expenditure for 2022, alt equal, let's use fill handle to drag it till column 
Okay, now to calculate depreciation in I-24, we will calculate the depreciation for data servers. Now we can select I-24 to J-24 and use a formula equals data servers cell reference which is I-19 divided by H-24 which is the useful life within the H column mentioned before. Let's make it absolute using F4 key three times so that our column reference doesn't change even if we use fill handle to copy the formula. Use Control enter. Now in J24 we need to edit the formula adding the value from I24. Enter. Now let's drag the formula to K24. Now the formulas will be similar for all these variables. So let's use fill handle to drag till row 26. So let's add total depreciation for all these years using autosum feature alt equal. Use fill handle to get total depreciation for these three years. Now let's go to operating expense. Here in C18 let's use a formula to use net revenue or Satan. Use F4 key twice to make it absolute so that the row reference doesn't change. Multiplied by the administrative percentage from assumption table, which is I13. Enter. Let's use fill handle to drag the formula to get marketing and other values for operating expense. Now the depreciation value will come from the depreciation we calculated just now. So equals I27. So total operating expense will be adding all of them. So alt equal. Now operating income will be gross margin minus total operating expense. So C16 minus C22. As we get our operating expense for 2022, let's select all of them and use fill handle to get operating income for 2023 and 2024 as well. Before proceeding any further, we need to complete some tasks on balance sheet. Let's go to balance sheet. Now here, as you can see, the blue fields will be the information that has sources from income statement. Let's add net revenue first. In I6 equals, going to income statement, click on C10. Let's use fill handle to drag till that. Now, to get cash and cash equivalence, we need previous value and net cash flow value. Since these values will be output from cash flow statement worksheet, let's assume that for now. Let's use minus 20,000, 1 million, finally 400,000. Now, we can see from the balance sheet that we have an initial balance for 31 December 2021, exact date just before 2022. So here in 2022 or D7, let's try the formula equals C7 as previous cash plus the net cash flow for 2022. Enter. Now accounts receivable will be equals the net revenue multiplied by accounts receivable percentage from assumption table which is 4%. Enter. Now total current asset will be addition of these two. So let's use autosum feature alt and equal keys together. Now for fixed asset value we need to include the previous fixed asset with the capital expenditure for 2022. So equals c10 let's make it absolute so that it's constant and doesn't change even if we copy the formula plus go to income statement and from the capital expenditure choose the one for 2022 now accumulated depreciation needs to be subtracted from the initial one so equals c11 minus from income statement the total depreciation for 2022 so here, our net fixed asset will be summation of D10 and D11. So let's use autosum feature, alt equal. For total asset, use alt equal as well. Now as the reference goes, we can see that it's adding D12 and D9, which are our net fixed assets and total current assets. Enter. Now select all of them and drag them till column F. There we are. Now let's go to liability section. In D15, we need to add accounts payable value. So we will multiply the accounts payable percentage of 5% from assumptions table with net revenue. So equals net revenue, which is I6 
let's make it absolute using f4 key two times so that the row reference doesn't change multiplied by accounts payable now unearned revenue will be just the same as unearned revenue is 4% just below accounts payable percentage so total current liabilities will be adding both of these alt equal now long term debt will be equals the initial debt plus the net borrowings minus the debt payments enter so total liabilities will be adding long term debt and total current liabilities so alt equal We'll add only D18. Let's add D17 with it. There we are. Now let's select D15 to D19 and use fill handle to drag to F column. Now as we can see that there is a small green triangle in these three cells on the top left corner. If we select them we can see that it's showing us inconsistent formula since the auto sum is not matching with the previous one. So we can just select them and choose ignore error. Now before going to equity section, we need to calculate the interest payment. For that, click on I13 and add equals long term debt value which is in D18 multiplied by the interest rate in I12. Enter. Let's use fill handle to drag them till column K. It's time to complete our income statement worksheet. Let's go to income statement and here the interest value will be equals balance sheet I13. Now net income before tax will be equals operating income minus the interest amount which is C23 minus C25. Now the tax amount will be the tax rate into the net income before tax. So equals c26 which is our net income before tax multiplied by the tax rate 23 percent in i16 so the net income will be c26 which is net income before tax minus the tax value which is c27 since it's not selectable we have typed it so this is our net income for 2022 Let's select C25 to C28 and use fill handle to drag to E column to get the net income for 2023 and 2024 as well. Now let's go to balance sheet to complete our equity section. Here common stock will be just the same as initial. Here retained earnings will be equals the initial earning plus the net income of the following year. So go to income statement to get net income in C28. So this is retained earning for 2022. So total shareholders equity will be adding common stock and retained earnings. So alt equal to add both of them. So total liabilities and equity will be equals total liability which is D19 plus D23. Enter. Now for balance verification we need to deduct the liabilities and equity from total asset. So equals total asset which is D13 minus total liabilities and equity. Now we need to make sure that balance verification needs to be zero. We will verify that after we go to cash flow statement. For now let's use fill handle to drag them so that we get values till 2024. Now let's go to cash flow statement. Here we can see there are different kinds of fill colors used. Here net income, depreciation, capital expenditure will be clearly referenced from the income statement worksheet and the yellow fills will be from balance sheet. Now here let's add net income from income statement sheet C28. Let's use fill handle to drag it till E column. Depreciation value from income statement as well I27. Now change in accounts receivable to get the value we need to subtract from balance sheet. So account receivable here will be C8 minus D8 so that we get the previous accounts receivable minus recent account receivable enter which is totally opposite for accounts payable equals let's go to balance sheet here we need to deduct C15 from D15 which is recent minus the previous one enter so change in unearned revenue will be just the same as accounts payable 
Use fill handle to copy the formula. To get the total operating cash flow, we need to add these four and net income. Let's use AutoSum feature here using Alt equal and here add C6 as in net income. Enter. Let's select all of them and use fill handle to drag till column E. For capital expenditure, it's the exact value from income statement in I-22. For free cash flow, we need to deduct capital expenditure from operating cash flow. So equal C12 minus C14. Enter. Now let's use fill handle to drag to column E. Now it's time for financial activities. Here, the reference will be from balance sheet, net borrowings. And debt repayment will be just the same, which is balance sheet I-11. Now, the only difference is adding a minus here since debt repayment will be opposite to net borrowings. So, net cash flow from financing will be equal adding these two. So, let's use alt equal to add these two. Now, net cash flow will be equals free cash flow plus net cash flow from financing, which is C-19. Enter. Now, just as we did before, select C17 to C20 and use fill handle to drag till column E. Now, these values will be used in balance sheet. Here in 2022, net cash flow will be equals cash flow statement C20 and using fill handle, drag till K column. As we can see that balance verification is not zero for all the years. So there must be calculation problem within our balance sheet. The problem is in fixed asset calculation. Here in C10, let's use F4 key three times so that it's no longer absolute. Now let's drag the formula till F10. As we can see that balance verification is zero. Here fixed asset will be adding fixed asset of the previous year, which was adding the fixed asset of 2021 every time which is why our value was wrong now as you can see we have successfully created pro forma financial statement for you using this elaborate steps you can also create a pro forma financial statement in excel you can practice this with the help of the excel file in the description box below let us know if you could do it in the comment section share your suggestions and feedback as well you can visit our website exceldemy.com and reach out to our forum for all your vba or excel related problems free of cost stay tuned by subscribing to the channel and clicking on the bell icon like and share the video if it helps you thanks for watching